Hello, I'm Gantia Blackbird of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Saturday, July 13th, 2024. It is the day of Saturn. It is the day of magic. We are moving from a waxing crescent moon into a waxing gibbous. So we'll have a change of focus there. We are in Cancer season, the Celtic tree month of Holly, Woodpecker season, the Saturn retrograde, Neptune retrograde, and Pluto retrograde. All in full swing. Now for today's astrology in detail, uh, the sun is in Cancer, cardinal water, representing intuition. The moon begins the day in first quarter Libra, cardinal air, representing courtesy. Then at 5.49 p.m. Central Time, it goes void, of course, and second quarter begins. Then Mercury is in Leo, fixed fire, representing ideals. Venus is in Leo, fixed fire, meaning to be ardent. Jupiter is in Gemini, mutable air, representing questing. Saturn is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, representing the need to redefine dreams. Uranus is in Taurus, fixed earth, representing renovation. Neptune is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, representing a spiritual awakening. And Pluto is retrograding in Aquarius, fixed air, meaning to examine intentions. So the Saturn retrograde... Its watchwords are reevaluate goals, reconsider commitments, reclaim authority. For Neptune, it's reimagine dreams, reclaiming a sense of mystery, reclaiming faith and magic. And for Pluto, it's reclaim the ability to regenerate, reconsider what deserves your energy, and release attachments that do not serve. So the moon phase, later today, we will have that waxing gibbous. We will be cultivating and Tensions. However, we this also happens at the exact same time as the moon goes void. So uh, we'll probably won't be doing anything active until you know tomorrow when the void moon comes to an end. Uh, but during the void moon, as it lasts for the for the evening, uh, the do's are rest, meditate, do some yoga, just very low key, relaxing type of stuff. Uh, the don'ts are spell and ritual work, big decisions, business deals. Essentially, kind of treat a void moon almost the way that you would do a Mercury retrograde. Just you don't want to get too in depth or too or too involved in anything uh, just because it's not going to go smoothly the way that it should. So just uh, wait a bit. Most things, you know, if either you know, we can get our magical workings accomplished before the void moon that hits late this afternoon, or we can just wait till the next day, either, or it'll be fine. Uh, so uh, review your progress that you've made on your intentions that you set at the new moon and be ready to kick everything into high gear uh, because once uh, the moon does take its place and the next sign, uh, you know, that's going to be the moment where it's we're going to really feel the effects of that wax and give us moon and we'll need to really get busy before we hit the full moon, which should be the moment of uh, manifestation for us. So for today's tarot, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Uh, his keywords are utility, serviceableness, interest, rectitude, and responsibility. Uh, so you're getting a very strong vibe uh, in and of itself right there. This is someone who gets things done and can be re uh, relied upon to do them. This is the perfect person that you would assign a, an important task to do. And when you're thinking pentacles think earth element feminine energy receptive uh for the suit of pentacles material action and for knights always think messenger now you'll notice uh this the the horse in this picture is just out of cards with the knights that is uh, uh, very indicative of how quickly or how slowly we might expect to see something taking place and for pentacles, uh, you can expect very slow action. It's going to occur in unfold. And I don't want to say still exactly, but they are definitely walking along. So don't expect instantaneous results for anything magical you might be doing. At least not while this is the atmosphere. Uh, next up, today's Celtic triad. Uh, three things not easily found. An arrogant person generous, a young person wise, and an old person mannerly. Now, arrogant people tend to be so consumed with their own concerns and their own sense of importance that they fail to notice opportunities for kindness if indeed they notice other human beings at all. Uh, so obviously this is not an admirable thing uh, to emulate. And then uh, for the youth, uh, they, they lack life experience. Uh, they don't have, they just have not lived long enough to see how various decisions and behaviors turn out. And that is what impairs their judgment. It isn't any lack of intelligence. It's just, you know, they haven't finished cooking yet. And not that any of us ever really do, but the younger you are, uh, the more likely you are to 
to have an ill effect from your lack of experience. There's a reason why babies are given parents uh, beyond the obvious biological reason, but there's a reason why uh, young people have such a need to be surrounded by uh, people who are older than themselves to help guide them. Not to micromanage their lives as it develops, but to guide them, uh, to let them know, you know, what generally has a good outcome, what generally doesn't, and uh, to encourage them to make decisions that will ultimately uh, build up their lives rather than tearing it down. And now we have uh, rude old people. <laughs> now, the elderly uh, may take the view that they have lived entirely too long to bother with anything other than plain speaking. And of course, some I have heard some uh, older people make the excuse of, I could die any day now. If I take too long to say what I need to say, you know, it's not going to get said. It's almost as if they're visualizing the reaper you know, in the corner of the room. Uh, but what it is, I think, what I think it really comes down to is impatience. They've just, they've had enough. And honestly, that impatience is something that's also shared by young people and certainly by arrogant people. Uh, they're, they're just wanting to just get on with things, uh, even if that's not necessarily the best possible approach. Sometimes slow and steady really does win the race. And uh, I think that I think we need to have an increased appreciation of the value of tact. And of course, older people are less likely to share that appreciation. So, so much for that triad. Next up, our magical intention for today is forgiveness. The color is blue. The plant is the geranium. The animal is hummingbird. And the crystal is the blue topaz. So when it comes to forgiveness, that isn't something that we tend to talk about a whole lot uh, within uh, witchcraft and paganism generally, because, you know, we're not really religions that are built upon the idea of sin that you constantly need to be uh, repenting of and seeking forgiveness for and absolution and all these other things. Uh, you know, we aren't, um, we just, we don't have that mindset. It's not part of who we are. And it's one of the things that don't, um, uh, also uh, separates us from uh, Abrahamic religions that are very much focused upon sin and making sure that human beings understand that they cannot possibly get by on their own. And uh, you can make your own decisions about uh, <laughs> what kind of uh, people that mindset actually creates. Uh, but for our purposes, uh, the question I want to leave you with is what do you think the proper application of forgiveness actually is? Not what other people have said, not what uh, the people who are trying to avoid being held accountable for things uh, say about forgiveness. I mean, what do you think the purpose of forgiveness actually is? What do you think it can accomplish? When do you think it should be applied? Uh, just uh, where, where can you really go from that? For today's practice, it's Saturday, so that's honoring uh, magical deities, working on the crown chakra. Uh, for your contemplation, is there any aspect of your Saturn sign that you feel disconnected from? And uh, speaking of the astrological signs, uh, we're going to be moving on into a bit of a different focus regarding them this coming week. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to encourage people to examine things from as many different angles as they can. So you'll have to come back tomorrow to see what direction we go next. Also, um, in honor of Saturday, uh, reading a bit up on uh, sea witch lore or learning a little bit more about uh, how people who are close to uh, you know the ocean really structure their practice. And also uh, perhaps do a bit of protection work. If you made that uh, protective talisman earlier in the week, uh, this could also, you could incorporate that into your protection work that you might choose to do today. Now for our journal. Has anything ever frightened you while meditating? If so, why was it frightening to you? And if not, uh, how do you think you would handle that if, if it did occur? Um, yeah, just, I, I don't know why that question occurred to me, but it did, and so I passed it on to you guys. Uh, maybe I'll find out later why it popped into my head. But uh, that's, that's what I have for you for today. I uh, hope you will uh, come back tomorrow for the next edition of the Daily Forecast. In the meantime, Time, let me know what you thought about all of this in the comment section below, and I will get to you just as soon as I pop tomorrow. Bye.